Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Sam Papiak and I'm the Program Director for the Writers League of Texas. I am here with Valerie Kaler, the owner at Blue Willow Books in Houston, Texas. Um, and we just want to get to know more about you and your bookstore. And so, Valerie, I guess we could start with just you telling us how you got into the bookstore business. Well, um, Sam, it's, it's a weird kind of one of those fluky stories. Um, we, I grew up here in Houston, and when we uh, lived out of state for a while, we moved back to Houston, and I moved into the neighborhood that I live in now. And on the corner of Memorial and Dewey Ashford was a little bookstore that I had been in maybe one time when we had lived here before. Uh, and I thought that that would be kind of fun to go in there and see what it's all about. And I offered to work there while my son was in kindergarten and help the owner. Um, and she accepted. And within a few months, it became obvious to me that she was ready to retire. And she offered uh, to sell the bookstore to me. So I don't know. I bought it. <laughs> so it'll be 24 years. Uh, my son is now, my children are now way grown and gone. Um, but it's been 24 years this October that I bought the bookstore. And um, I don't know if it'll be another 24. But uh, interestingly, it's the only thing that's ever been in that book, in that um space. It was built out in 1973. So the bookstore in another iteration was had, had been there since 1973 and it's been Blue Willow since 1996. Wow, that's so lovely. I love that it was sort of like passed down to you as this precious uh, thing, um, which it totally is. Yeah. So, cool. Can you tell us three words you'd use to describe your store and its character, its mission, you know, the community at your store? Well, if I could quote a movie, it's You've Got Mail, <laughs> because that's what it looks like. Um, I would say uh, homey, uh, comfortable, and curated. Beautiful. Everything a bookstore should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, and so you talked a little bit about coming into the bookstore and it being homey and stuff, and bookstores are so central to, I think, not just community in general, but the literary community. And so I'm wondering, like, what would you say the responsibility of a bookstore is today? And you've been in the business for quite a while. So, if, you know, your definition yeah. has changed. You can speak to that, too. It's changed. Of course, it's changed over the years. So when I first started, I uh, brought in a lot of, it was sort of known for kids' books. I started to bring in more adult books. And so now the bookstore is fully half kids, half adults. So I really would like, I really am trying to appeal to um, grandparents, parents, kids, people of all ages. Um, and I, I, we really just want to do this outreach into the community and make people feel comfortable there, um, make them feel comfortable about the choices that they made. And that's really one of the big things that we've learned through this pandemic is um, because we do curate, because um, we have to. We're a small store. We don't buy one of everything. Um, we kind of curate what we feel like our customers might want. But what we found during this pandemic, and people have been very supportive in ordering online, is that people like a lot of different things that we never even heard of, uh, which is fine, which is great, because we've learned a lot about um, other genres that, you know, that we aren't as strong in. And it's, it's been kind of fun to figure out some of these authors that we've not, we didn't know much, much about. And now we're figuring out, you know, they're very popular in their genre. And, and so it's, it, that's been a real eye opener for us. But we try to make people feel comfortable about whatever their choices are. And of course, to stay as apolitical as we can, because I, we feel very strongly that while we have uh, really attempted to embrace um, the social justice and the turmoil that has been going on, and we certainly have brought in a lot of Black Lives Matter books, but we have had already been doing some of that in our uh, kids' books, in our, especially in our middle grade, in our teen books. And we've had a diverse group of authors that have visited us us over the years um, and we've tried to do that with our festivals um, of course they're virtual now 
at least for the time being. But um, so yeah, we've just, we've tried to kind of keep it where if you want to read this kind of book, great. You know, if you want our opinion about a book, great. It's so just, just like you would if you were to come in and you asked a friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lovely picture. And I'm really glad that you talk about like the job of curating your store because bookstores really especially smaller bookstores like you're where people go to find their books you know and you're helping like you know sculpt the literary canon and it's just like really beautiful um right yeah well here's the here's another thing uh, over the course of the uh for seven years i served on the board of the national board of the american booksellers association so i had the honor of uh, the pleasure, really, of going in a lot of different bookstores across the United States because we would have our board meetings in different cities and we would go into different bookstores. And I, what I really found is how different they all are. Every one of them. I mean, there was not one that I walked in and went, well, I've seen this before. They, they were all so incredibly different and also incredibly different, curated differently and it was just really a, a, a real fun thing to be able to go in and, and learn new things about what it's like to be an independent bookseller. So, yeah, that yeah. is fascinating. Um, I guess like they sort of like reflect the communities that they're yes. in. Everyone's yes. different. Yeah. That is very uh, the community and also the the staff. You know, it, it also reflects the the people who work there. You know, it's their vibe too. That 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 is reflected when you come in a bookstore. Thank you. And so walking into the bookstore, what is your favorite section of your store? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I would have to, um, I, I mean, uh, fiction is my, is my thing. I love fiction. Um, um, yeah, I would have to say the fiction section. I mean, I, that's the one I kind of concentrate the most on. We have a very eclectic nonfiction section. Uh, and I do read a lot of nonfiction, but when it comes to it's the fiction. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> awesome. And so bookstores, you know, they sell books, but there are also so many other like trinkets and items that can be found in bookstores. I in particular love refrigerator magnets and... <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm wondering, besides books, what's one thing that you sell that you just love to see customers buy or walk out of the store with? So we sell a lot of games. We sell a lot of board games. And I'm a gamer. I come from a family of gamers. Um, so I'm always thrilled to find a new game. Um, we don't sell, we, we sell a, all ages of games. I mean, I played games with my kids when they were as young as they could possibly be to play games. And then, you know, my family gets together and, well, not right now, um, but my family gets together and play, get, plays games. So we're just a game family. So I love finding new games. I love telling families what to buy. Um, my, my one thing is, is that all the games that we have are non-battery operated. They have to, and I really like games that are multi-leveled in that grandma can play this with 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 the six-year-old and the three-year-old um but if the eight and ten year old want to play it there's a different rules and different levels so i like games that have a little steps in them that that can make the game increasingly um more strategic and um and i and not too difficult to learn how to play although Ticket to Ride is one of our favorites, and that was d incredibly difficult to learn how to play. <laughs> That's awesome. Games, yeah. Um, and so this is our last question. Is there anything else that you'd like folks to know about your bookstore? Um, I just would love to meet everybody every uh, at, any, at any given time. Um, I, you know, just come visit us. We, we love uh, seeing people. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is that, especially to writers, I, you know, we want to support all writers. Um, but again, we are a very small store, so we have to be very, we are limited in, in, in what we can, um, we can keep on the shelf. We certainly are happy to order books for people all the time. So if people want to, writers want to, to 
tell their tell their fans, their their readers, um, we're happy to order their books for them. But keeping them on the shelf is a little bit more, a little bit harder because we just are so. I mean, the, the store is very small, so we just got to have a very limited space to do that. But um, yeah, that's it. Well, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today, Valerie. Oh, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much.